um, I just wanted to make a short video um, because I've recently posted a new article on my pandemic investigation website. It's also on Check the Evidence, um, but I'm, it is more to do with the COVID-19 scam than it is with the regular Check the Evidence stuff. So I just wanted to give a quick summary of that. I've got it on the screen here. Um, I gave it the title of Investing in the Lie, Slaves to Belief, because this is kind of what it's the idea that it's structured around and the um, analysis. And really, it's meant to be somewhat for people who, you know, have not really thought about this and what's actually happening. They haven't thought about it very much. So really, to try and get them into thinking and looking at the evidence for what's been going on, I've given a few bullet points um, about the situation in the UK. For example, these government advisers who broke lockdown and you know did various things, yet they were supposed to be the ones that were actually saying that this was necessary, and therefore this suggests that they think the virus isn't a real threat. And this, of course, is Neil Ferguson, Dominic Cummings. And this has sort of faded into history now because of the, to some extent, because of the pace at which this is moving. Um, one of the big important things here is the reliability of this virus test, let alone the uh, actual reality of the virus itself. Both these are big questions, so I've mentioned that, uh, and how they've, you know, summary of how they've kind of made this look a lot worse than it actually is. But I think the latest figures that I've seen are suggesting that something like less than one percent of the population, even by their fudged figures, of it, are getting infected and. 0.01% are dying of it and uh, this of course is about a thousand or more times less than it would be happening if there was a pandemic so you know there is no way that this matches their definition so I go through a few things like that uh, maybe not the last one that I just said but that sort of thing um, and then there's a, there's a um, you know, another random link that I put in there, which I came across on the same day as I was posting this, or somebody sent me it. Um, but going on from there, I really want to get people thinking about this idea that knowledge and belief are really the difference between, to me at least, freedom and slavery, and that really when you have knowledge, this is what sets you free, and uh, belief, you know, puts you into slavery, and uh, and this ties in with what Dr. Judy Wood said. Uh, you know, know what it is that you know that you know, and uh, I, you know, like to sort of requote that as "Don't confuse knowledge with belief." Now, again, there's probably, you know, philosophers and stuff that have, that have said this more eloquently and in a much more um, authoritative way or whatever. But that's that's my way of expressing it. And then I go into the various beliefs which you know have been being used to create this scam, you know, believe what the media tells us, and here I've got this image, it's not very big in this article, but uh, I've got it elsewhere, and this was on the papers a few weeks ago, all the UK daily papers had this rainbow image with stay alert on there, and you know, you've got to ask the question how much the papers were paid to put that into print, it must have been hundreds of thousands of pounds, uh, and this is not what you do for... Uh, you know, a public health campaign, not in this way, you know, it's just a, 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 an establishment of a cult with its symbol and its phrasing, you know, and all this, uh, and I'm sure I go into a bit later. So what you need to do is make people slaves to this belief, and I point out that many people became, became slaves to the belief of, of Islamic terrorism and stuff. which of course was just another scam and um, you know but the, the point was that if unless they were regular air travelers you know it didn't really affect their lives whereas this affects everyone uh, and mainstream is you know has tried to enforce these beliefs and uh, encourage them and promote them at every opportunity whilst actually um, you know censoring essentially the knowledge which would prove that these are just beliefs and they're not actually knowledge at all. It's a, it's basically a story that that is, you know, being put out because of an agenda. And it's obviously this this is the same with the COVID nineteen thing. It's a, on a massive scale. 
So then, of course, you've got to believe in this test. You've got to believe that the virus is real. Then you've got to believe in this test. And I picked this up from Facebook. You know, this imagine a virus so deadly that you needed a test to see if you've had it or not. You know, and it's a very good uh, sort of way of putting it uh, in this twilight zone that we're now in. Now in. And so, you know, explore that a little bit. And then, um, of course, um, we have a belief in the NHS in this country, in the UK. And this has been, you know, very successful, this campaign to, uh, you know, idolise the NHS and turn it into this godlike entity. And you can see that these are just three pictures I took, all within essentially half a mile of where I live, you know, just walking to the shop and post office and back. And you'll see see all of these images here that are, that uh, just within a you know, square mile of where I live. Um, and there's lots of other houses that have got similar designs and stuff. And I, I've posted about this in, in previous posts, you know, over here in this area, uh, that you'll find these posts and stuff. And, um, you know, they've now they've tried to do local lockdowns here. They've done it in other countries as well. Um, but even this, this one that's happened in Leicester, which is about 30 miles from here, you know, there's a doctor that's come out Fortunately, he hasn't given his real name. He said, you know, this is just totally unnecessary. The figures don't support it. The hospital itself doesn't actually have any evidence of a pandemic. You know, he's more or less said that. Same in Surrey. So, you know, then you've got to believe that there's a risk. You've got to believe in this track and trace. That's the only way to resolve the risk. You know, don't get to know, for example, about the HCQ treatment. And this is the mantra they came out with in an animated commercial, which uh, I think I've got the link to this in a video of, uh, somewhere in this article, but you can find this video online as well. Um, then, of course, the next belief, that which is now coming into force here, the enforced belief, uh, which is, well, it's coming to um, hairdressers, this was the local hairdressers, but it's coming into more general use on the 24th of July here, and this is pretty shocking. Uh, I'm going to try and write to the local health authority to ask them what scientific studies this is based on. Um, for for instance, I was in the post office today chatting there about this, which I think is is fascism. It's health fascism. It's not political fascism. It's health fascism that is being rolled out across the world. And the lady behind the counter, you know, she said that her husband had to go to the doctors. They're enforcing mask wearing at the doctors here. And this chap had COPD, COPD which is a respiratory disorder. Uh, it's quite serious. And he nearly passed out when he had to wear this mask. And uh, he was gasping for breath when he was there. So this proves that this is unhealthy. Yet uh, they were willing to put this guy through this, you know, with proven evidence that he has COPD because he might have something else and this is an inversion of how things should be operating so you know um, then you've got to uh, be, be benefiting from uh, a belief of, of, in a vaccine that's going to be the only solution so that's the next belief which is now you know they're going to now bring out and they already started it of course and been going on for years but they're now going to you know do something to enforce this belief as well and say that you need it and uh, but then there are other benefits for people here. You know this this idea of paid holiday. Um, people are furloughed here. You know they've been furloughed I think until September. Where's all this money come from? Where is this money come from to pay all these people to sit at home doing nothing? You know um, where has it come from? People are not asking that question. They just say, oh great, you know I can sit at home. This is good. I don't mind this coronavirus, it means I can sit and do nothing and get paid for it. This is how it's working. So when you show people evidence then, why don't they accept it? Well, I've already given you some reasons and uh, I look at some others, you know, things like the lack of humility. We have this culture of uh, leadership and being strong in your opinion and that sort of thing. And, you know, you, 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 should, you can't just admit that you're wrong or that you made a terrible mistake. Um, you know, and then I've written to all these schools. I emailed about uh, 20,000 school email addresses and, uh, you know, little to no response. Uh, no response, in fact, no meaningful response. I've had one tiny bit of dialogue, but it actually didn't come from this mailing. It came from, via another chap. Um, and you can see here I've got a string of not reds, not reds, not reds. 
And of course now we've got Amazon and Google, just to name a couple of things, I and mean, it's not just them of course, Apple have bought into it. So they've now invested in this lie, they've designed systems, they've spent money, they've allocated funds, Facebook's done the same, I haven't mentioned Facebook here. So you can see that this, this network of, of, of belief and investment in that belief and investment of money has now cemented this and made it, you know, that's, that is the new normal. It's not being created by us, really, only by us in the fact that we've used these companies, used their services and subscribed to them and given them this power over the last 10 years and more. And that's now allowed them to enforce this belief system and shut out any dissenters and any anything that might break into this narrative and this belief system and this cult that they've set up. So this really is like casting a spell, you might say, and... Uh, you know, then we can sort of start to examine uh, some of the occult angle of this, you know, that other people have looked at, and there was quite an interesting video that Mike Williams has done quite recently. I mean, you know, there are some things that Mike Williams has done about flat earth and stuff, so that raises some questions, because that's, you know, another belief system, and clearly uh, knowledge will uh, quickly uh, dissolve that belief system in flat earth if you care to gather some knowledge, which of course many people in that uh, trapped in that belief system won't. It's the same same issue with the flat earth as it is with the belief in the coronavirus. It's the same thing. You don't look at evidence which proves that you've been lied to and you've been deceived. So um, that was really the end of this uh, article uh, talking about... Uh, more deception that you might like to investigate. So it's really m me trying to sort of lay out uh, um, that it is a, a cult, it's a belief system and it's being enforced. It's trauma-based mind control that's at work and uh, that's the argument that I make and you know, others have too, uh, but I've perhaps done it with a slightly different angle on it and whatnot. So I hope it's useful to somebody. And just while I'm making the video, really, um, I'll just mention that Amazing Polly has put out this video um, today, or, in fact, no, sorry, a couple of days ago now, three days ago, which was very interesting about uh, the links between science, and uh, she mentioned this scientific technological elite, which is something I've talked about uh, in reference to Einstein's speech, and I mentioned it in the Climate Change book particularly. I was interested to see she'd used this phrase and she's established some quite interesting connections between the Epstein affair and the Nazi Germany, JPL and some of these other things that have come up with the eugenics programme and the coronavirus scam as well. Quite an interesting video, it's quite long, 45, 48 minutes as you'll see there, but uh, I think it's worth listening to her and uh, she, she, she does have a good... Um, you know, sort of way of putting things together. Some people, you know, think uh, this, she's got uh, some kind of nefarious agenda, but you see she links all the research here very well uh, and the articles that she references, so I really do like that from her videos. Um, and then going back, uh, I've gone perhaps in slightly the wrong order, but um, going back to the masks issue, which of course um, they, they, they're trying to, inf going to try and enforce here, um, there's this website called the, I think it's called the Benition, I'm not, not quite or Bernickian, I'm not quite sure uh, how to uh, um, uh, pronounce his name. I'm not sure what his real name is, but he's put this Magna Carta Declaration of Rights, uh, which you can look at. I'll put these links in the description. And also we have uh, uh, the approach that's been taken in California, at least in one county, to, uh, to get rid of of uh, the mask mandate and I think something like this needs to happen here uh, so that we can defeat this part of the encroaching um, you know, enforced fascism agenda so I was interested to see what these uh, this group had done in, in California and whether th th that can be applied here um, so they've got quite a good video which you can watch here as well so you know do do think about looking at that um, and they talk about how a, good, a governor cannot make laws like this. And, for example, I don't know how they've managed to uh, declare this mandatory mask wearing. Well, has it been voted on in Parliament here in the UK? I don't know. Um, and uh, so I don't know what the actual legal... Um, uh, whether it's just a guideline or whether they can... You know, how, the, how, how they're threatening to fine people £100 here and stuff. But whether they can enforce that, I don't know. 
So um, anyway, that's just a few of my latest thoughts and uh, that I thought I'd upload something as I haven't for a few weeks now. So um, I wish you well for now and thanks for watching. And please do share this uh, article here if you can. Uh, go onto my website and find it if you uh, or click the link in the description and whatnot. And uh, I've invited questions to anyone that has them, haven't received any yet. And uh, I wish you all the best. And again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.